Hello and welcome to the Korean Beauty Show podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, K-beauty expert, founder of Style Story, where you can shop, learn, and explore the world of Korean skincare online at stylestory.com.au and your guide to everything you need to know about Korean skincare. And that is what I wanted to talk to you guys about today, but specifically in the context of congested skin, uh, because this is a question that I just get asked so many times, you know, what are, what are your favorite products for congested skin? What do you do when you get breakouts? How can I cure it? What's causing it? This is a really, really common one. And I think it's because pretty much everyone at some point in their life, unless you're one of those really lucky unicorn people that just never has bad skin, in which case, uh, skip this episode, you probably won't need it. But I think for the majority of us, we have had periods in time, periods in our life where for whatever reason, you just can't seem to get rid of bumpy, textured, uneven skin. Maybe it's a little bit lumpy, blackheads, whiteheads. You just keep getting breakouts in the same area. If any of those things are like ding, 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 you're checking these off in your mental list, then stick around because I'm going to talk about why this happens in the first place, what we can do to prevent prevent it and run through some products that I know for a fact can really, really help. Uh, So look, let's unpack it and let's start off with why skin becomes congested. There are a laundry list of reasons you you will probably be a little uh, upset to hear. It's not just one thing. Common culprits can include things like hormones, your diet, stress, pollution, uh, medication even. There are a lot of medications that can change how much oil our skin produces uh, and they can have a really big impact and just throw everything a little bit out of whack. The other thing that can often get overlooked is an improper skincare routine. And that also means using products that are just not right for you. Uh, Jumping on maybe the latest TikTok trend or over exfoliating your skin, all of those kind of things. Uh, And the reason that a lot of people worry about congestion in the first place is because it can lead to more serious things like acne. So the first thing that I want to sort of start out by saying is that congested skin is quite common in younger people people, particularly teens and adolescents, and that's because our glands at that age are producing a whole lot more oil. So if you fall into that category or you have a son or daughter that does, just know that unfortunately it's very, very normal. It is usually just a phase, but when to start getting worried about it is when it moves from just a little bit of congestion into things like sore pimples, uh, pussy pimples, pimples that are just getting bigger and redder and don't go away, that's when it's probably time to go and see a specialist, uh, particularly in your teen years, because it can develop into things like cystic acne and whatnot. But for a lot of people, it will just be all of a sudden you notice that your skin is just looking a little bit worse than normal. Uh, And that can be uh, super stressful. I know that for a fact. You know, I have had more skin issues in the last couple of years because of wearing a COVID face mask than I have in the last probably 50 15 years. Uh, And all of that is related, you know, because the skin can't breathe properly when it has a mask. It has something rubbing against it all the time. It gets really hot and sweaty under there uh, and things get trapped in it. So there are so many different reasons why this can become a problem for people. But a lot of people will then say, cool, but how do I fix it? Diet is really important for a lot of people and it's something that you can fix a little bit more easily than other things, which is why a lot of people will often recommend starting there. It's within your control. Uh, Unlike something like wearing a COVID face mask, which, you know, at the moment here is still compulsory, there's not really anything you can do about that. But when it comes to your diet, some things, quick and easy fixes that you can make is cutting back on things like processed food, sugar, and alcohol. For some people, that makes a difference. So, you know, if you can, try and add just a few extra veggies into your diet. Cut out on 
you know, the sugary sweets and treats. Now, if that doesn't make any difference and you've tried it and that is not the reason, then, you know, you can just tick that off your list and move on to the next thing. But that's often just an easy one to start with is just paying a little bit more attention. Now, in my case, when I was a teenager, I remember that was the first thing that was recommended to me uh, pretty much by everyone. The first one, the most unhelpful was, well, do you wash your face? Which is just like, oh, my God. Like, it's so insulting on so many levels when people are basically like, you're just dirty. It's like, uh, thanks, but no, that's not the reason why I have acne. Uh, And so I did actually try this and it turned out that for me, unfortunately, doing all of those things made absolutely no difference uh, because that was just not the kind of uh, issue that I had with my skin. But for some people it can. And there are some people that say, you know, I really notice if if I've had chocolate or something like that the night before, I'll often get a pimple. So in case that is you, that is one fix that you can look into. The other one that is really simple to incorporate into your routine is regularly washing your sheets and your towels, your pillowcases, all of those things. Uh, Particularly if you know that you are prone to acne and congested skin, just make sure that you are regularly doing that. You would be shocked how much oil, sweat, and just bacteria actually builds up on those kind of things. So keep an eye on it. Try and pop them in the wash at least every week uh, and just, you know, watch that. Some other really Uh, simple tips that can, well, they sound simple in theory. In reality, they can be a little bit harder. Number one is to avoid touching your skin, particularly with unwashed hands. I know it's so tempting. You just want to keep touching it. And oftentimes you're pointing it out to people and you're touching it, but just try and avoid touching the problem area because that doesn't usually help. And particularly when you haven't washed your hands. Uh, The other one, and again, this is a lot easier said than done, is to try not to pick or pop pimples. So if you do have little spots coming up, just pimple patch them, take that temptation away. Uh, Sometimes when they're winking you in the face, you're just like, I need to get rid of you. But I find when I've got a patch on it, it's just like, okay, I can just chill. I can't see it. I can't touch it. Let's just forget about it for a little while. So that is another one. The other thing, uh, even though I just said that, you know, I found it so annoying when people told me to keep my face clean, obviously we should still be washing our face uh, depending on uh, how oily your skin is once or twice a day and also making sure that you keep it moisturized as well. That's another really common mistake that people can make is going, eh, I'm oily enough. I don't need to bother with a moisturizer. Uh, That is not a great idea for a lot of reasons. So just make sure you keep your skin clean and moisturized. Moisturized. Now, what skincare should I use if I want to clear up my congested skin? I see so much information being bandied about. I see so many people these days giving all of their recommendations, you know, share your routine, drop your routine, all of that. And I think the one, some people give really good advice, but the one thing I think a lot of people overlook is the importance of your cleansers. Using the wrong type of cleanser can aggravate many skin issues, including irritation and a damaged barrier. Uh, I actually had a really bad bout of uh, dermatitis dermatitis uh, around my mouth recently. And one thing that helped me, normally I don't cleanse in the morning just because of how dry my skin is. But one thing that actually helped was using a foaming cleanser, uh, a powder cleanser in my routine every morning just to keep the skin clean. Uh, And that in combination with a couple of other things I was using actually helped clear up the dermatitis. Uh, So I cannot overstress the importance of using the right cleansers steer clear of anything too harsh, double cleansing. If that is not already a part of your nightly routine, that I really encourage you to look into that. Uh, I know that it can sound really counterintuitive, particularly for oilier skin types to start out with an oil-based cleanser, but there is nothing better that I have found for helping to remove makeup, excess oil, SPF, all of those things. You don't even realize sometimes how much is really still left on your skin. So I do my uh, oil cleanse with a cleansing balm every night and the amount of sunscreen that washes out with that that I can see it in the cleanser is really, really shocking. So if you'd only you know, if you hadn't used that oil cleanser to get it off, part of that is still going to be on your skin. 
So a couple of duos that I can recommend for my dry, sensitive, mature skin, I guess you could say, uh, Subi's Bare Skin Balm and Brightening Powder Cleanser. That is what I actually use for oily, acne prone and combination skin. Like I mentioned, again, I still think that having uh, a cleansing oil in your routine is really important. There are lots of nice products on the market. April B's Blackout Cleansing Oil is a really good one. Dialba Piedemont has a gel type cleanser that functions the same, which is a good option for gently clearing out the pores. And that one is huge. It comes in at 300 mils. That's another good option to look out for for your first cleanse. For your second cleanse, again, I would be trying to stick to something that is pH balanced uh, or at least something that is nice and gentle. Uh, There are so many uh, products on the market that you can use for that. The other thing that you can try and incorporate, you know, a couple of times a week, it depends on how uh, dry your skin is, how sensitive your skin is, is something like Jelly Co Cinnamon Toast Sugar Scrub Foam. So this is actually a two in one product uh, because it actually has these tiny little sugar crystals in it. And how you can use it, there are two ways. You can use it either by keeping the sugar crystals a little bit chunkier and applying that straight to your face or you can actually break them down on your hand first melt it into your hand and then apply that to a damp face that gives you two ways to cleanse with a single product and that way you can really customize it uh, and use it how you need it at every single cleanse uh, which can be a good option for a range of different skin types Uh, so your cleansers are very very important definitely look into them if you've just been using any old thing then i would really urge you to just take a look at that again and make sure that you really are using the best products, the best combination of products uh, for your skin, because that one is one that I just see a lot of people overlook. People immediately uh, ask, you know, what serum can I use or what moisturizer can I use? But your cleansers can really hold you back from clearing up a whole lot of different things if you're not using them the right way. So that's my first uh, big one that I would say to look into. Now, the other one is your toners. So I think toner is still a really good step in your routine, particularly when your skin is congested. Uh, I think the important thing is to, it's going to be trial and error because a lot of the kinds of toners that will clear your skin up in the sense that they will help exfoliate the dead skin cells away, they will help keep your skin clear, they may not be the best ones to use every single day or twice a day, but you're going to need to test it out in your routine. Uh, so for example, a couple of products that I really like are It's and Trees Clear Skin BHA Toner. That's quite a nice one because it does combine the BHAs along with Centella Asiatica plus sodium hyaluronate and licorice extract. Another one that is similar but a little bit thicker and a little bit almost creamier is April B's AHA BHA P. PHA glutathione seeker toner is there a longer name for a toner in the world I'm not sure but again it combines a whole lot of different acids into a nice formula but I think if you do tend towards the dry or sensitive side of the of the skin scale what I would probably recommend doing is mixing up your toners so have an exfoliating one that you incorporate into your routine but have a hydrating one in there as well that you can use several nights a week maybe you just use your exfoliating one a couple of nights a week and then the hydrating one the rest of the time Uh, that is a a really good way to make sure that you don't uh, damage irritate over exfoliate all of those things with your toner and that's even for people that tend towards the oilier side you can still experience all of these things uh, so our jelly co dewy glaze toner is obviously perfect for this just because it is a hydrating thick chunky uh, one but it won't weigh your skin down at all so a lot of people that have combination and oily skin use it as well and that is a great way to do it is just to mix up your toner When it comes to skin treatments that you can use to combat congestion, lots and lots of different things on the market. And I think it will really come down to how you like to use your products, the textures and things that you like. 
So some people really love their chemical exfoliants. Uh, and if that's you and you do like these products, you get good results from them and they don't cause you any issues, then there are many nice ones on the K-Beauty market at the moment. Some of them are the It's and Tree Chestnut AHA, 8% clear essence. And this one has uh, glycolic acid. That is the one of the smallest types of AHAs, which makes it really good for penetrating into the skin. Lactic acid as well, it also contains, but AHA at 8% is quite high. Uh, so if you're looking for something on the chemical exfoliant uh, side of things that is a little bit more gentle, then something like COSRX BHA Blackhead Power Liquid might be a better bet for you. Uh, I personally like to use a clay mask just because chemical exfoliants and my skin really do not mix. I often get flushing redness and just a, a irritation that tells me that they're just not the right fit for me. Uh, something like Subi's Hollow Dream Pore Minimizing Mask is a good option for people like myself uh, because it doesn't, it, it's non drying and it doesn't include any fragrances. The other types of skin treatments that you could use if you like the, the texture and the feeling are the peeling gels. Uh, so these are the ones that basically function. It's like a gommage type product. They're really good for exfoliating your skin. And you may have seen them because it almost looks like when you're using them that it's the dead skin coming off your face. Uh, you know those ones that have like bits coming off them when you rub them on your face. So it's technically just the formula. That's how it's designed to work. But it's really a nice, pleasing sensation. Uh, we've got a couple of different ones on our site. We've got the Beauty of Joson one. The peeling gel is quite popular. We also have one from April B as well. I think it's called Refresh Peeling Gel. So a couple of different options. Uh, they, these ones are, you know, very, uh, it's a popular style in Korea. And I noticed that Huda, uh, her, her skincare line, Wishful Skincare, they've actually got one. I think it's called Yo Glow. It's in a yellow tube, but she actually makes her products here in Korea. So if you're after something like that, you could look at one of those ones. The other way would be uh, an exfoliating serum, something like Be The Skin's BHA and Pore Zero Serum, uh, which is formulated with 1% of Willow BHA. You could bring it into your skincare routine here. But the point of all of these treatments, all of these different options is exfoliation. So we're looking to clarify, unblock the pores, exfoliate and clear the skin. Uh, it's a really important part of our skincare routines. The key is just to choose the right product for you that doesn't sensitize, irritate, damage your skin, dry it out too much, cause flushing, redness or any of those things. So play around. There are so many different options out there. Patch test or always, particularly with these kind of products, uh, but just find Find something. I think the mark of a good product and the right product for you will be consistency. So something that you can use regularly. If it's the kind of product that you can use once in a blue moon because it blasts your skin off, it's you're not going to get the results that you need. Consistency is super important. And the other thing is something that you enjoy using. So if you hate the smell of it, if you hate the texture, if it burns or something like that, that is not a product that you're probably going to keep using. So I would recommend skipping past that and finding something else. Uh, there are just so many different ones. There is no point. You don't need to stick along with something that you just really can't stand. Uh, and it will just be a process of trial and error, finding a consistency, a product type or texture or some ingredients that really agree with your skin that you can happily use on a regular basis so you get the results you need without irritating your skin. The other thing not to overlook is your moisturizers. So getting your moisturizer right when your skin is congested is really important. We don't want anything too heavy, but you do want your skin to feel hydrated, soothed, and soft. Uh, and the reason these are so important is because it's all about balancing the skin. We don't want too much oil, but we don't want too little. And this is another thing that you do kind of need to play around with and work out which texture, uh, which thickness and which ingredients really your skin just drinks up and feels really comfortable and nice after you've used it. So some options that you might like 
uh, if you have oilier type skin, if you're acne prone, if you are a teenager with younger skin, uh, One Thing has a beautiful Centella soothing cream. It's also vegan uh, and that features Sika, Centella Asiatica, which is really good for people with red, irritated skin. Uh, and the reason I suggest this for oilier and younger skin types is just because of how lightweight it is. I think if you have more mature skin like me, you're just not going to get the moisture you need from it. It's not going to be enough. If you are combination, so a little bit, uh, need just a little bit more from your moisturizer, April Bee's Healing Moisture Black Snail Cream is a really nice one. Uh, so many good ingredients, including the snail. It has better glucan and macadamia seed oil as well. So that's a really nice one. I know some people with oilier skin use that at night as well. They say it's a bit too much during the day for them, but it's nice at night. Uh, if you are after a nice, gentle retina, cream to help manage your congestion. Chosunga 22 has their retinol cream, which contains a stabilized form. And that's a nice one. I would probably suggest that one more for people in their 20s and 30s. If you are wanting a slightly richer formula that also targets the signs of aging while hydrating skin, April Bee's uh, AHA, BHA, PHA Glutathione Seeker Cream is the one that I would suggest. So lots and lots of different options, but the most important thing when the skin is congested is not to go too heavy, uh, but just to make the skin feel really nice and comfortable. Moisture is so important and hydration is still really, really important. Uh, if you are confused, if you want more personalized tips for your skin, uh, please always feel free to reach out to our staff. You can send us an email. You can send us a DM on social media. We are at stylestory underscore kbeauty. You can email us admin at stylestory.com.au. We would love to help curate your routine. You know, if you've tried a couple of things, but you're like, oh, I don't know if I need some tweaks or, you know, suggest questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out. We would love to chat through it with you, find out what you've been using, what you liked and didn't like. Uh, we just have so many uh, different options, I guess, for you, but I know it can be really overwhelming if you're not 100% sure. So we would always love to help put a routine together for you, even if it is just adding in one thing into a routine that you're otherwise really happy with. Uh, whatever you need, just reach out and let us know. We would be really, really happy to work with you to do that. Uh, that's one of my favorite things actually is when people reach out and then we can actually put something together that they really love using uh, and that, that they just don't need to stress about anymore because I know how stressful, particularly congestion, it's just like that middle stage where it's not full-blown acne but your skin isn't clear and it's super frustrating. I know firsthand uh, that has been probably my number one complaint with my skin in the last two years. And a lot of it has been outside of my control. Uh, acne mechanica is what I have been suffering from at times of the year, which is the technical term for mask knee. Basically the mask just constantly rubbing against your skin really weakens your skin's barrier and opens it up to all kinds of nasty things. Uh, so that has been my, my little COVID friend for the past two years. Super annoying, but uh, it has meant that I've had to take a really close look at everything I'm using, everything that I'm putting on my face uh, and making sure that my routine is doing everything that it needs to be doing to support my skin when there's nothing else that I can really do about the mask wearing. So look, I hope some of that was useful. I hope you did pick up a couple of new tips and tricks, uh, maybe a product that you hadn't heard about before. If you did, I would love for you to let us know. No, I would love for you to share your review. I'm going to wrap it up here, but I will be back in your ears next week for another episode of the podcast. Until then, I will see you on Style Story. Bye.